So we hope that this introductory lecture about the six lessons approach to biomimetic dentistry helps reinforce some of the things that you are doing to help your patients save their teeth, but also inspire you to get further training. In an hour and a half, we can't condense three days of training or 12 months of, of mentoring, but the more you get familiarized with the science that is the bedrock for the techniques that you are using to have better predictability, your life will just become a lot easier as a dentist. Now, I just said a phrase that I think is incorrect. I said, your life is gonna be easier as a dentist. <laughs> that is absolutely false. We're hoping that it'll be more predictable. What is the life of a dentist, Dad? It's big stuff. You know, if every lesion was small or incipient, it would be very different. If you're just bonding to enamel, you could do that all day. If you could do just hygiene checks, you could do that. That's not stressful. But we have challenges in dentistry. We have large lesions, deep boxes, deep cracks, deep decay. This is the life of a dentist. It's not the small stuff. And so when you move from incipient lesions that you were taught to fix conservatively in dental school, that is not your life from day one that you get into private practice. You have three, three problems. You've got the problems of deep boxes, deep cracks, and deep decay. And how you approach these 3D problems will determine the success you have moving forward. In dentistry, we see three types of outcomes or failures. And traditional dentistry always is doomed to some kind of failure. We either have a biologic failure, a clinical failure, or a catastrophic failure. We would like to prevent number three for sure. We would like to limit number one, but number two is something that we deal with all the time, but we can prevent even the clinical failures to a high degree when we connect a tooth side to side, front to back and top to bottom in the range of 30 or 40 or 50 megapascals. Now, over the last five to eight years, biomimetic dentistry has gained a lot of traction through social media. And oftentimes in social media, you see before pictures and after pictures, but it omits the chasm between what you started with and what you ended with. This tooth was a retreatment of a dentist and the tooth had gone non-vital. So it's a major structural compromise, but the steps we counted them were 30. So we have 30 steps. That might sound like a lot. But if you understand that each step has a critical place to play or role to play in connecting a tooth side to side, front to back and top to bottom in these high strength bond regions, then you understand that it's worth the effort to do it. That takes a little bit more time. And as you become more familiar and more confident with each of these steps, you'll understand that each tooth is different and each tooth presents very technical challenges. And so when a manufacturer comes to you and says, I've got a new product, <laughs> I've got a new bonding system, I've got a new material that's going to make your life easier. It's going to make it simplified. Faster. <laughs> Guess what? It's probably inferior. Yeah. In 2001, Bart Vanderbeek said it best. Bart Vanderbeek is the leading investigator of science that is investigating adhesives. adhesives. He said this, that adhesive restoration has many advantages over conventional non-adhesive restorative techniques, except it cannot be yet realized in a simple, simple way. So simple, beware of that idea. But if you have a restoration that takes 30% or 50% more time, but will last four times as long, in other words, instead of 10 years, 40 years, that's a value to the patient. Now, 23 years ago, that may seem like a long time, but unfortunately, <laughs> it's exactly the same in 2024. <laughs> Good adhesive dentistry cannot be realized in a simple way, and it never will be realized in a simple way because of the physics that you're up against. Right. When we think about what really drives to mastery, it always presents itself as a major challenge. Many of you on this a webinar are avid golfers, myself included. Guess what? There are some days where I love golf and there are some days where I absolutely do not want to think about playing golf. 
It's the same thing with dentistry. There are days when you love being a dentist and days when you absolutely dread going to the office. But this challenge keeps bringing you back. This challenge that leads to a passion that cannot be quenched. <laughs> so the six lessons is an homage to one of my dad's childhood heroes, Ben Hogan. You know, he started playing golf when I was 16. I have been playing it uh, ever since then. So for five decades, I've had a challenge and a passion to master this game. But the idea of six lessons came from five lessons. It's just that dentistry is a little more difficult than golf. <laughs> so the name Six Lessons comes from the book from Ben Hogan. Now, in order for you to gain consistency with your work, you have to have a system in place. Anytime that you see predictable results, there's a, a system in place. The Six Lessons approach is based upon a hierarchy. All six of these areas are important, but the most important is lesson one, and followed by two, three, four, five, and six. If you don't have a caries-free and a crack-free peripheral seal foundation, everything that you do adhesively is going to be compromised. In other words, you need to have bond strengths that mimic the natural tooth of 30 to 50 megapascals. And so when you take a tooth that has got a deep carious lesion that's responding normal to cold, what is your approach? Your goal as a biomimetic dentist should be first to preserve pulp vitality when possible. This will be done by an incomplete caries removal near the pulp and complete caries removal in the peripheral <laughs> seal area. The tooth has an ability to heal, but it's all cont contingent on how well you can seal. If you can't visualize your hierarchy of bondability because you're not using caries detecting dye, you're going to have ambiguous results. Now, in this case, we've got a large undermined palatal cusp. This is impeding my vision to be able to obtain my final caries removal endpoint, which is our foundational principle of lesson one. By onlaying the cusp, I now have straight line access and better visualization. This will expedite your caries removal, so you need to distinguish between critical tooth structure and non-critical tooth structure. But let's just talk about this image. This image shows partial caries removal. Ray Bertolotti is a good friend of Van Thompson. Van Thompson is an early investigator and supporter of adhesive dentistry. He wrote an article in 2008 that said, complete caries removal is contraindicated. That should be taught in every dental school because if you remove all of the caries in this tooth, you will expose the pulp, to triple the chances of the pulp dying. So we do partial caries removal to preserve pulp health. Now, one of the 3D problems is a deep box. When you have a deep box, it requires either crown lengthening surgery, or in this case, a deep margin elevation. With adhesive techniques and biomimetic dentistry, you can preserve more hard tooth structure, which in this case would be bone, by improving your isolation, improving your matrix adaptation, and then understanding how these small volumes of composite and small increments of composite, that the directed shrinkage can go towards the tooth as long as it's separating inner caries from sound dentin and sound dentin from enamel for a period of time. In the central stop zone where we have outer caries and inner caries, we are reinforcing that area with our fiber placement. The fiber placement has one important characteristic and that is polymerization stress relief. Now, as we move to our enamel replacement, oftentimes when dentists are seeing biomimetic reconstructions, they see a beautiful top. That is not the most important thing when we are doing biomimetic dentistry. It was actually those previous videos, how you do your caries removal endpoints how you do your crack removal endpoints, how you're doing immediate dent and sealing and stress mitigation of the overlying composite as you're creating a bio base.